Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome those visiting with us on this, the anticipatory mass, the vigil mass of the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our announcements for this week. This weekend, our second collection is for the Building and Maintenance Fund. Please be generous. We're taking orders for the next phase of the memorial walk in the back of the OLPH cemetery or to the eastern side. So in other words, when you enter the cemetery, it's with the ongoing development of it now, what used to be what's considered the front is really now, the front is now the entrance that's towards the back part of our property in the parking lot. So when you come in, you'd say like the, 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 the side of the cemetery that's going towards Belchase Highway would be the, the western side and the eastern side would be the side going back towards the property that bumps up against the, the, um, the military base property where we share. And so we are in the next phase of developing that memorial walk. We invite all of who wish to honor the memory of a deceased family member or friend to participate by purchasing an engraved brick for $50, thus assuring them a permanent place to be remembered at OLPH. Order forms are available in the church library. So along, if you, as you're going out, or as you're coming in, the section as to the right-hand side or to the left-hand side as you're going out is a table filled with all different types of paraphernalia and so forth for uh, religious, uh, for spiritual growth and so forth in the order forms except it's not color. The copies you have on the table aren't, aren't color, but they look like this. And you can take advantage of memorializing a loved one uh, and keeping it certainly in a place that's sacred and consecrated. In honor of St. Francis Feast Day on Tuesday of this coming week, October the 6th, we are having a drive-by pet blessing at 6 o'clock p.m. Bring your pets to get a special blessing from yours truly and Deacon Ed. On Friday, October the 16th, from 5.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m., the Knights of Columbus are having a hurricane relief fundraiser. They will be selling fried fish, french fries, coleslaw, corn, and bread for only $10. It will be drive through service only, and donations will be most greatly welcomed and accepted. Proceeds will be donated to Hurricane Relief. I'm sure you are aware of the news relative to two of our priests active, who are active in ministry, having been removed this past uh, Friday, Archbishop Amond. There's going to be a story on WWL on the evening news. I'm not sure if it's going to be the 10 o'clock news or the 6 o'clock news. But they're going to be uh, presenting a story that entails uh, uh, clergy abuse. One of the priests is deceased. His name is Robert Cooper. Now, the Archbishop, the Archdiocese, has informed WWL that there is a priest by the name of Father Robert Cooper who is the pastor of Divine Mercy Parish in Kenner, Louisiana and to make sure that the people understand that the priest that they are referencing is deceased. He's not the one who uh, was allegedly uh, involved in, in abuse. And the other priest is Father Louis Fernandez, who is retired and has moved out of the diocese. And both cases, accusations have been leveled, according to the diocese, were leveled, but they were not able to establish, based on the evidence and all that was brought to the, to the diocese, there was no ability to establish a credible, or uh, rather, a moral certitude that would give credibility to the claims. And so that's where things stand. But just to let you know, when you hear the story, uh, the Robert Cooper that's referenced, and they, they are, hopefully they are saying they're going to show a picture of the one who they're referencing to make sure that there's no confusion and that that priest, the, the one who's actively serving in our archdiocese, is not confused with the one that they're referencing. But more importantly, we now realize more than ever, prayers are consistently needed on every level for the entire mystical body of Christ, its leadership, its membership, its mission. The intentions for this afternoon's Mass. Beverly Hebert, Elisa Harvey, Nick Liebel, 
Maria Tesvich, Alexandra Alley Botler, Daryl Roy, Kenneth Harvey, Zarko Dragojevic, Joycelyn Means, Sammy Means, Nancy Blanda Lane, Renee Bowers Sr., Bernitha C. Avist, Laura Ann Williams, Deidre Adrien Black, Reba Bubrig, All Souls in Purgatory, and Ethel Lejeune. I invite us to stand at this time as we can express a word or a gesture of welcome to each other as we prepare to encounter Christ in the word and sacrament of the altar. As our celebration begins, let us raise our voices in singing, I sing the mighty power of God. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. If moon shines full at God's command and all the stars obey, I sing the goodness of the Lord that fill the earth with food, that formed creation with a word, and then pronounced it good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Beloved, as we prepare to encounter the Lord Jesus Christ in the Word and in the sacrament of the altar through the Eucharist, let us, so as to more worthily have this experience of the Lord's mercy and love, acknowledge our sins so as to give the Lord the opportunity to bring his healing, his peace, and strength to us. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have, have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts, thoughts and in, in my words, words in, in what I have done and in what I have failed, failed to do. do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, fault Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, 
Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked at the crops of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to set rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are its cherished plants. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed, for justice, but hark, the outcry. The word of the Lord. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea, its sheets as far as the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The boar from the forest lays it waste, and the beast of the field feed upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. If your face shines upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds 
in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go and bear fruit that will remain. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you o Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Here is another par- Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, there is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will come of the owner of the vineyard? What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved, as we near the conclusion of the Gospel of St. Matthew, this is the 21st chapter, we hear the second of three parables that Jesus is using to continue to teach us about the reality of God and the kingdom therein. And this image of the vineyard is one that is very much utilized in both the Old and New Testaments. And when Jesus is speaking as he does, he's speaking to those who have been charged 
those who are entrusted with not merely knowing their religion, but practicing it in a manner that produces an example that will bear fruitfulness in the community of those they've been entrusted to lead and guide. But what we see here is a common dynamic. Jesus quoting, in essence, or rather, rather utilizing the same type of poetic writing and star presentation as we hear in the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 5 verse 1 through 7. God is presenting his people with a judgment, but a judgment that's based on his divine providence for his plans and purposes to come to fruition, not merely for them, but for the whole of the world, for the benefit of the whole world. And Isaiah, in using the imagery, is somewhat clever. Let me tell you this story about this song. Let me share a song with you about my friend and his vineyard and how he tended this vineyard and how he cultivated and treated it in such a way that it would be so wonderful. And of course, as he tells this story, the indictment is, is revealed that when the owner of the vineyard comes to see to look for the harvest of the, of the grapes and so forth, there is nothing but rotten, stinky grapes. And as we hear the writing, it speaks of that grape being rotten or not a wild grapes, is being synonymous with the outcry and of violence and the outcry of those who have been neglected, who have been abused by the leadership. Jesus, in presenting the same reality to the chief priests and the elders, he makes it clear to them that the same dynamics are at play. This reality is you have been given this charge. And yet what has happened? You've grown complacent. You fail to realize that everything that you've been given has been given to you. You own nothing. You've been privileged with the opportunity to be God's co-worker, to be uh, an instrument of cultivating this life, this bountiful blessing that God wants to give. And instead, what has happened? Time and time again, messenger after messenger, sent to remind the people, to bring correction to the people, put them back on, on point. What happened? just ill-treated, stoning them to death, killing them outright, beating them. And then we see the zinger in this parable. Every single parable Jesus presents always has some detail that makes you say, well, that doesn't make any sense. And what is it? What is the detail in this parable? After those initial servants were sent, he sends more, and the same fate happens to them. Then he thinks, ah, I know what I will do. I will send my own son. Surely, when they see him, they will recognize what they need to do. But of course, when the son comes, there's an outright rejection. They are in the mindset, they want it all. And when you embrace that mindset of wanting it all, something that's not yours to, to possess to begin with, you've chosen a path of destruction. So we know in this parable, Jesus is that son. The servants that were sent over and over again, more numerous the second time, or the prophets over the ages. It's a history of how God was cultivating his relationship with his people to be a blessing, to prosper, and it's not only a word for them, it's a word for us. Because we are the fruits. We are the fulfillment of this word that Jesus speaks. He says, now the reality is this. You have failed to uphold your responsibility to love. And that's really what the parable is, is communicating. It's the same word that God spoke with Isaiah. It's all about how tenderly and lovingly God 
has attended to his creation and how he has graciously invited human beings to be a part of it. And it's more also to the point showing you and I that love is very demanding. It demands a lot. And when one fails to respond to that demand, there are consequences. And in this case, well, in the case of the people of the time in which Isaiah was prophesying, what befell the people? Exile. Total exile. The Assyrians invaded, the Babylonians invaded. But more importantly, all that God had given to them, the temple, the synagogue, all of that was destroyed. They were left with nothing, nothing, utter desolation. But the psalm that is given to us today, Psalm 118, would have been a word that the people, or rather, not Psalm 118, actually, Jesus quotes Psalm 118 when he talks about, have you not heard the, the scripture? The stone rejected by the builders has become the chief cornerstone. That is a psalm that they all would have known because that was a psalm that they traditionally prayed and enchanted as they were moving out of the place of slavery in Egypt into, on the way to the promised land. So in saying this, Jesus is making it very clear. You're not just rejecting, in this case, in my person, some one of many prophets. You are rejecting the one, the Messiah, the Christ of God, the very Son of God. You're rejecting him and this word and promise of fulfillment. And so this is the charge. The kingdom will now be taken away from you and given to others. And now we see the expansion of the kingdom is no longer simply relegated to the Jewish people, the chosen people, but to the Gentile world. The entire world is now invited to the vineyard, to the life of God. And for you and I today who hear this word, we are being invited to consider, to evaluate, if you will, to hear this word and to discern what type of fruit are you and I producing because the judgment will come and in the same gospel of Matthew he tells us on what basis the judgment will be what does the, this love what is the fruit that God desires for those who have been given the stewardship of this creation what is he looking for when I was hungry you gave me something to eat when I was thirsty you gave me something to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was imprisoned or ill, you visited me and comforted me. That is, in essence, the litmus test. That's the final exam. That is the type of fruit that God is looking for. How are we responding to love? the opportunities therein, and to what God has given us to strengthen us for the work. And what, pray tell me, has God and is God giving us to attend to such work? Look at the life of the church. Look at the sacraments, the Word of God. What is my attitude? What is your attitude to having the opportunity not only to assemble and to encounter Christ one day out of seven, for some of us, we can come every day for daily mass, to receive the bread come down from heaven, to hear the word of life, to be always reminded and fortified in the ways of God, in the ways of righteousness. And yet, what, have I, what am I doing? Am I neglecting it? Do I see it as burdensome? Do I see it as something, one more thing to do? It's a word. It's a reality that each one of us must take to heart. And we have to honestly, honestly evaluate this and place ourselves at the mercy of God, who will indeed be merciful unto us. He will indeed continue to be who he is in relationship to us. But he can't force you and I to make the response that we all are capable of making. St. Paul tells us in the second reading how to refocus because they were obviously going through problems in the Philippian, in the Philippian, Philippian community. And he tells them, whatever is honorable, whatever 
is, is in, a, in a manner that bespeaks of the goodness of God, the purity of God, the love of God. Attend to this. Meditate on this. Strive after this. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will govern your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and His Son, Jesus the Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. God love you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our God plants a vineyard of life that he watches over and protects as faithful stewards of all that God has created, we pray. For the church, may she carefully guide all peoples toward right relationship with God, with each other, and with this good earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. For civil officials and those who govern, May they promote whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have found life destroyed due to the irresponsibility of others, with the grace of God, may they learn to trust again. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, the needs of the people whose names are written in the Hear Our Prayer Book, and the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, united with Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all members of this parish community, may each of us use our gifts and talents to build up the church and to care for those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that the Lord's face may shine upon the faithful departed, especially Carol Abadie Jr. and Colette Villery Ford, bestowing upon them the fullness of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, we will be spared damage to life and property during this hurricane season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for all military and first responders, that they and their families may be kept safe from all harm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now entrust these petitions given voice with those we hold in the silence of our hearts to the faithful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our perpetual help, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord God, the vineyard planted by your hands is the kingdom of light, happiness, and peace. May we be faithful stewards of all that you have provided and watch over the most vulnerable in our world. Let our prayers this day come before you as a sign of our love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the bread and wine are prepared, let us join in singing the prayer of St. Francis. Make me a channel of your peace. Pray, beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and have and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever the peace of the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other the sign of peace Lamb of God Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we come forth to receive Christ's body and blood, let us join in singing the refrain for take and eat.
that sets the captive free. I am the life that raises up the dead. I am your peace, true peace, my gift to you. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you. I am the lamb that takes away your sin. I am the gate that guards you in his eyes. You are my flock, you know the shepherd's voice. You are my own, your ransom is my blood. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take For those presently unable to receive Jesus in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, we offer the following prayer. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee. That with thy saints and angels, 
I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down and pray for God's blessing. May your faithful people rejoice, we pray, O Lord, to be upheld by your right hand. And progressing in the Christian life, may they delight in good things both now and in the time to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the good news of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remember to take the song sheets with you when you leave and discard them, and we'll go forth singing, Sing to the Mountains. Sing to the mountains, sing to the sea. Raise your voices, lift your hearts. This is the day the Lord has made. Let all the earth rejoice. I will give thanks to you, my Lord. You have answered my plea. You have saved my soul from death. You are my strength and my song. Sing to the mountains, sing to the sea. Raise your voices, lift your hearts. This is the day the Lord has made. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.